Father being an icon, for example, was on the cover of all those magazines and represented activism. But specifically, you are now leading a lot of work engaging um, the, the work of Jesse Williams and, and Judith talked about Jesse and other um, actors and, and entertainers. Can you talk a little bit about how you're feeling at this moment and what you're doing uh, with your work to, to bring about some of that change that we're hoping for? Thank you, Rashid. Thanks to the city and nation for bringing me here, and I'm so honored to be on this panel. Um, you know, I'm listening to what both Judith and Rashad are speaking to, and uh, the work that Advancement Project and Color of Change are doing is so critical to shifting of the narrative, because when that young lady was handcuffed in her kindergarten room, and that news story came on the television. My father just so happened to be in, uh, in Florida, actually, for uh, an event. And when he, he was at the hotel, he turned on the, the news. There, there she was, being handcuffed, and immediately called the Advancement Project and Connie Rice in particular to find out what's going on and why aren't we all in the streets and why aren't we all outraged and what is happening, only to find out that, in fact, it was coming to some kind of uh, pandemic proportions that young people um, of, of that age would be uh, arrested, and that was back in, um, gee, that was a long time ago, 2005. Um, you know, my father is an incredible example of an artist um, who was first an activist. Um, similar and like Jesse Williams, who was an activist first and then became an artist, who has chosen to use his platform over and over again to shine a light on issues and disenfranchised peoples and the plight of blackness in America. And I think that we're at a moment where this generation of folks, or it's actually a multi-generational tipping point, I think, where you know, for a long time, I think some of our elders were like throwing shade to a lot of young people because they weren't doing anything, and then a lot of young people actually weren't doing anything. And I think the voices that were marginalized were those of the elders who actually saw and uplifted the young people who were actually doing things. And I think we've come to a tipping point where now that's more of the norm in the sense that the, those voices are coming forward far more clearly. Uh, when you see um, you know, a group like Blackout United come together um, out of frustration and wanting to be able to you know, make their rent and put food on the table, but also use their platforms to shine a light without marginalizing their, their platform, without, you know, um, without those organizations and companies that they work for saying, oh, thanks very much, we're gonna use a different director, Ryan Kugler, but, but them really finding space and voice in a way that can articulate the narrative, shift it, and also bring light to those who are really on the front lines doing the work. So it's really a bridge and a partnership that we're finding, which is what our organization, Sankofa.org, does, in bringing grassroots organizing and the voices of those on the front lines that are doing this work with the leadership of organizations that have been in this work for a long time and bridging the gap with Hollywood and art and culture and using art to help articulate the narrative in a way where uh, folks that don't know enough can learn more. Because we found over and over again that art really opens the heart, it opens the mind. It's an opportunity in a way, not only over the hitting someone over the head, but using metaphor to actually shift consciousness. Um, and it's through Sankofa.org that we're working on now, which is a legacy project, trying to institutionalize the capacity of someone like a Harry Belafonte or a Jesse Williams. Um, and, and making sure that we are educating our artists because so many of them want to say more and do more, don't feel uh, that they're educated enough or articulate enough to, to, uh, to bring the message forward so they tend to you know, sort of stay back we're, we're creating spaces and ways in which we can educate our artists. Rashad has been very 
helpful to us in that space, also another organization called the Opportunity Agenda, where we've been able to help artists cultivate their own uh, passion and message. Uh, and more and more we see that um, with that unfortunate group of mothers, there is also an unfortunate group of fathers and sisters and brothers and aunts and uncles. And I think that our communities are just feeling like they're having, they've had enough. And I think there is a collective that is mobilizing to come together so that we can see how we can lean on each other and use each other. Uh, because color of change can't do it alone, as Rashad said. Advancement Project can't do it alone. Um, and so it is our hope at SankoFa.org that we will be able to bring en masse uh, many folks together. And this October 1st and 2nd, in Chattahoochee Hills, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta, we will be launching our first two-day social justice music and art festival, where we have an incredibly crazy lineup of artists who have come on board to donate their services to shine a light on issues where we've also been able to mobilize an incredible amount of frontline um, activists and organizations to come together to show the world, to show our country that we're not going away, we're gonna to continue to have these conversations, we're gonna to continue to, to meet and greet each other and to show a unified front around shifting narrative and perceptions of who we all really are as human beings. And um, I will close uh, with saying that, you know, many times we've walked out of rooms like this saying, well, you know, here we are once again. And we've talked and we've shared, but what the hell are we gonna do? Well, I don't wanna discount what the talking and sharing is. I've been in a room with Sean Dove maybe a dozen times, and maybe it will be now that will tip that moment where he and I perhaps will come together and do something together, or it'll take 12 more times for us to be in a room, but we need these rooms where we can get to know each other, have a deeper understanding of what we do, how we do what we do, because everyone has a different approach, but we're all leading to the same space. And so I think it's important that we continue to meet, continue to talk, continue to leave these rooms not knowing necessarily what to do, but to continue to seek the answers on how we can continue to uplift and shift narrative and support organizations on the ground that are doing this amazing work. Okay, thank you.